If you're a Liverpool fan now, after what you saw at the weekend, beat by Brighton, I think, for the second time in, what, two, three weeks? You sit ninth in the Premier League, you're on 29 points to get into the top four, you need at least another 10. United have got 39 points. Um, the chance of silverware looks less and less as the weeks move on. Would you be worried if you're a Liverpool fan? Yeah, you'd be slightly concerned, wouldn't you? I don't know if you'd be worried, um, but you'd, you'd certainly think, be thinking, hmm, what exactly is going wrong? Not playing well, not playing with anywhere near the same intensity, uh, same quality. Players that we expect to be at a certain level, they're not at that level. There's been a few incomings and outgoings that obviously you're still, you're still waiting for Gakpo to take off. Mm-hmm. Darwin Nunes, I think it's done okay, but you're still waiting for, with the money they spent, what, 80 million euros on him, you're still expecting him to, to, to be better than he's been. So... It's almost, and I know we, we throw this this word around a lot, but it, feel, it certainly feels like that Liverpool are going through transition, where they've been Which so. Which is good. mad when you think about where they were. Just yeah, but uh, this I, time last season, we were talking about Liverpool doing the quadruple. Yeah, but a, a year a year is a long time in football. You think about what they've lost. Mm. To people like Sadio Mane. He, like, I know a lot of people don't don't like to hear it, and they go, "Yeah, but that's one player." But even, and even people like balance Di- as well. Even someone like Divock Origi. All of a sudden, you think he's someone who used to come on when they need a little goal here mm. or there. Do, do, a little you, goal. do you think their squad's been neglected? You mentioned Mane. You've got when Adam, of course, left. Mm-hmm. Wasn't that long ago. Henderson's not getting any younger. Trent can't defend. Virgil van Dijk's the wrong side of 30. They've not strengthened. James Milner now comes on. They're, they're looking at Harvey Elliott, who's playing slightly out of position. He's carrying their midfield. Mm. Is, is this team showing a lot of neglect, do you think? I don't know if it's neglect, but I'm sure finances have got a lot to do with it. Because... And we we said it was it last week or the week before. If you're Jurgen Klopp and you're sitting there and you're watching Chelsea do what they're doing, what they're about to do again, 105 million, That's you, nuts. You, your head's falling off. Yeah, J- Jurgen Klopp is one of the best managers ever. You'd say yeah, Jurgen Klopp, one of no ever. I, okay, I wouldn't like to answer that. He's won every trophy there is to win Liverpool. He's okay, li- okay, one of Liverpool's greatest ever, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, no doubt about that. Yeah. One of Liverpool's greatest and ever managers. And he's certainly one of the best in the world at the moment. Exactly yeah. right. He's he's sitting there looking at he's one of his rivals because Chelsea are a rival. That are just going what for mid table? <laughs> that are just ridiculously spending money left, right, and centre. He's watched Manchester City. He's gone touch toe with Manchester City. They spend money all the time. Even Arsenal putting their hand in their pocket, but yes. for few players. So, New, sorry, Newcastle's investment. And then he, he's looking at again. Well, he needs bodies. I know they've got a lot of injuries. Van Dijk and Diogo Jota and Diaz. So when they're all fit, they'll be better. But in that middle of the park, they need legs. They need fresh yeah. legs in there. Uh, have a listen to this former Liverpool midfield. Uh, sorry, forward Neil Mellor joined the breakfast show this morning, suggesting that things at Liverpool aren't as bad as we all think they are. There's a lot of doom and gloom about Liverpool season being over, but I'm sort of thinking I wouldn't write this Liverpool team off just yet because there is a long way to go. Liverpool have got two games in hand on Spurs. They're seven points behind. They've still got to play Spurs. I know it's an if, but if Liverpool mm-hmm. were to win them games in hand, there's only a point behind. They've got to play Spurs. So whilst there's still those amount of games left and Liverpool are in that position, I really don't think you could, could write Liverpool off. That was Neil Mellor. Uh, he makes some good points. Hmm. When, if you're a Liverpool fan, if you're not panicking now, because we're just they are bang on halfway through the season, when, as a Liverpool fan, would you start thinking, actually, things are going from bad to worse? Well, I think Liverpool fans right now are probably thinking, well, you know what? They, obviously, they're not going to win the league this year. They're still in the Champions League, but... They, 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 Real Madrid's a massive yeah, game. They're, they're, they're having a tough time. I think, considering the, the, the last few years that Liverpool have had, I think this season, they'll be disappointed, but I think they'll go, right, right, let's see what happens in the summer, let's reinvest in the squad, and then we go again next season. Now, if you're talking about this time next season, and it's still a little bit, then I think there's serious questions to be asked. Mm. But right now... As I said, when you've got people like Diaz out, Firmino, I think, is close. You've got Diogo Jota, the Arthur, the man of that ball, he's, he's barely kicked the ball, do you know what I mean? So mm. they've had Virgil. You get all these players back from injury, they'll be a better side, but they, they need to invest, in my opinion, in the middle of the park. But, but we, all, we all know that everyone in the... Not everyone, but the big heads in the Premier League are getting stronger. Mm. So Arsenal, this season compared to last, totally different side. Oh, yeah. Night right? and day. Man City are just Man City. Yeah. Newcastle, totally United. different. Manchester United look like a different side as well. So it's not Chelsea are coming with their investment. W- without a doubt, Chelsea will start moving up. And then you've got other teams like Brighton that are just absolutely flying yeah. at the moment. That's a tough place to go though, that. It is a very tough well, they're just they're just getting from better mm. to better, aren't they? They're, you know what? I know we're not talking about Brighton, but Brighton's problem will be when player that teams like Caicedo all of a sudden Arsenal turn his head Matoma I know but they're losing Trossard. a lot of players that, anyway that's going to be the problem is that they're going to that teams are going to come and just keep picking their best players yeah because Matoma at the minute he looks like one fantastic. of the best players in the league yeah his goal was fantastic wasn't yeah it? Um, so if you're a Liverpool fan you wouldn't be worried now but if these things continue 
Yeah, their battle is to try and make top four right now. It's not to win the league. Mm-hmm. It's about getting into the top four. Am I completely writing them off? Absolutely not. But Because w- once they get their players back, I think they've got an opportunity there still. How big is the Real Madrid game? Because Real Madrid aren't flying at the moment over no. in Spain. W- are we going to find out a lot more about where Liverpool are when Do they play what? Real Madrid? In Champions Leagues, I'd, f- I'd probably feel more confident for Liverpool if the second leg was at Anfield. When the first leg's at Anfield, I'm a little bit like... Mm. Yeah, I get that. But you know, when it's second leg, it's completely different. Yeah, whatever score, if they're two or three now... Doesn't matter. You fancy them, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with that. But I just think the, the Real Madrid game, as you said, it, it, it's massive. And all, all, all of a sudden now, the Champions League becomes their season, Liverpool's, because out the FA Cup, not in the League Cup, not going to win the Premier League, that's all that's left. Mm. Um, Jurgen Klopp is unsackable, do you think? If Liverpool, yeah. if Liverpool have this season, next season, if we are talking about Liverpool, this time next year, 19 games played, they're still mid-table. Yeah, I don't know if they're sacking, but he might walk. I can't, I can't see them sacking him. Really, young clock? No, I'm asking the question. I, I think he's got. I mean, if you've got someone like, for argument's sake, Thomas Tuchel, yeah, still floating about. Jose report. I'm not suggesting Jose is going to be the next Liverpool manager. Reports at the weekend suggesting that Jose wants to give it one more go in the Premier mm. League. There, are, I mean, there's always another manager, right? No matter how I, great your manager is, I don't is. think they're turning to Jose. Thomas Tuchel, maybe, but not Jose. But to, to think to sack clock. I mean, if they are. I but, did, he might walk away. You made he, a very good he, point he, he might walk about away. Chelsea investing all this money. He all looks at his side. They waited, what, 29 years for the, to win the Premier League? Yeah. And now they're falling back again. It might be a blip, but everyone when has it, injuries. They do, but they've obviously lost key players as well, mm. very good players, but I can't see them sacking him, though. Okay. He might walk. I, I don't think they'll sack him, but he might walk. Chris is a Liverpool fan. Hi, Chris. Hi, guys. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm very well. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Thanks. Not too bad. I thought you said, um, give your boys a call. Great show as always. Thanks, always man. my favourite show to. Uh, Tune into. Oh, that's nice of you. Go on, what would you like to say then about your side? You're a Liverpool fan, right? Yeah, I think it's really difficult. Everyone you see in the press is Klopp's deluded because he never says that he needs players. And But, you know, I, I don't know what Bentley thinks, but surely from a player's perspective, your manager coming out and not saying I need new people, I'm not, I don't need new legs. Surely, from a morale point of view for the player, that's got to be a good thing, right? Surely he, he never blames his players. That, that can't be a bad way to be as a manager, right? No, do you know what? You're right, Chris. He does protect his players. Um, he'll, he'll come out. And I think a lot of the, the best managers do that. Of course, you, you have a couple in Jose who regularly used to throw his players under the bus when things weren't going very well. But Klopp has got that kind of skill where he is kind of taking it all in because he is a little bit rattled at the minute. Like Every time the, the reporters are asking questions, you can see that it's, it's, it's nagging at him a bit. But he never really blames his players. But... I, I mean, I can't ever see them sacking him. That that will not happen. But even if ne- next season's the same, he'll walk before they sack him. But I can understand his frustrations when it comes to investment in the in the playing side of things. When you're looking at your rivals and all these teams, Chelsea, Arsenal, City, Man United, even Newcastle, you have to put in there. They're all rivals. When you see them all strengthening and he's not, mm. it must be frustrating. Chris, let me ask you, if we, yeah. uh, we fast forward now to the end of May, I think that's when the, the season finishes, last weekend of May, when you look back at what Liverpool have done for this season, what will have happened to them? What would they have won, if anything? Where were they finishing the league? I think you've got to... One thing I'll say is that we've got to get top four. I think the problem with the recruitment is that I imagine that they've put all their eggs in the Bellingham basket. And they probably did that at the end of last summer. Um, and that's why they've not brought midfielders do, do you in. Think, they've probably put all their money in for Bellingham. Do you think Bellingham will go to Liverpool if you've not got Champions League? I... I think that you've got a couple of big a big pools and you've got Klopp pool. Um, I think that if he saw there's money there to recruit and the investment, so let's face it, the midfield is the problem. Now, take the midfield out, they're still arguably one of the best teams in the league. You know, that the front five they've got is, Nunes looks very good, just needs to, you know, fix his radar a little bit. And that back four and keeper is still one of the best in the league but you know it's the same, it's the same goalkeeper's only as good as his defence and the defence is only as good as their midfield do, right? do, do, do you know as well Chris when you talk, Thanks, when you, Chris, when you talk about Bellingham as well I know you talk about Champions League but there are certain clubs out there that have got that pool without, with or without Champions League and I think Liverpool are one of them football clubs where I know everyone wants to be in the Champions League but Liverpool will not be out of the Champions League for long they'll be back there next season no, you're right. maybe even this we, season we did it with Pogba yeah so I, I think there's certain, there are some clubs that to convince a player they have to be in the Champions League I don't necessarily think Liverpool won them clubs. And, and if you're young, like Jude Bellingham is, you know you've got time on your side. Exactly. He knows they're going to be there yeah. soon. I'd love to know whose preferred club is. Real, I, I hear Real, Real Madrid, yeah. every week it changes. I hear one week it's Liverpool, then it's Real Madrid. I, I, I really like the idea of Arsenal, obviously, but if not, <laughs> if not Arsenal. That's a surprise. Yeah, but if Arsenal, you're in for Rice, you can't have both. Oh, imagine they did. No, 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 you definitely can't have both. But they're saying quite nice about Bellingham if he just didn't come to the Premier League and went to Real Madrid. 
But let me just ask you, do you think that if you... if How can I phrase this without sounding like it's pro-Arsenal? I'll use Arsenal as the example. If Arsenal signed Declan Rice, mm-hmm. right, do you get this scenario? If, if Arsenal signed Declan Rice and then you go to Jude Bellingham and go, look, you're going to play alongside this player in Declan, uh, does it become more appealing? Yeah, of course. As a player, you think so? Yeah, because they're basically Arsenal will be selling you the project. So they'll come, you're Jude Bellingham. I go, yeah. listen, we've just signed Declan Rice, one of the, the best young English midfield players yeah. in the country. We believe you're in that same bracket. This is what we're trying to build. We're signing this these type of players. In crime. Yeah, of course. You, yeah, you go, we've got Saka, okay. Martinelli. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Makes sense. Do you think you'll get Rice? Depends, doesn't it? A, a lot depends on what Arsenal do this season. If they win the league, massive chance. Yeah. Talk Sport Drive with Andy Goldstein Monday to Friday afternoon from 4 on AM on DAB via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker Talk Sport